This is the Volvo XC60, and while it might look similar to every other Volvo XC60 you've ever seen, it's actually the facelifted version which has just launched here in Australia. And while there are some subtle exterior changes to freshen up the appeal of this Audi Q5, BMW X3 and Mercedes GLC rival, it's actually what's under the bonnet and what's inside that offers the most to talk about. This will be a family review, as you can probably tell, and it'll be split into chapters. If there's anything you are interested in, you can jump ahead. The time codes are on your screen now. Or if you're on YouTube, you can find chapter markers down below so you can just jump ahead to what interests you. If you are on YouTube, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and share this video if you know someone who's interested in an XC60. Or if you're interested in something completely different, we've got hundreds of other video reviews. So make sure you take a look around our channel. The 2022 XC60 range has seen a few changes to the naming strategy. So all models used to have the T prefix to the variant name. Now it's B5, B6, or if you're after a top spec plug-in hybrid version, it's called the Recharge plug-in hybrid. The Polestar name is no more for the XC60 range. This particular model is the B6R design. It sits near the top of the range, it's second from the top in fact, and it's about $15,000 less than the range topping plug-in hybrid, but about 13 grand more than the entry level version. Because it's the R design, it gets a more powerful engine, but it also has a few sporty extras, which might be right for you if that's what you're after. Standard equipment for the B6R design grade includes the huge 21 inch alloy wheels and a more stylized body kit around the bottom edges of the car and a number of black finishes outside as well. Sports seats in the front, Nappa leather seat trim, a black headliner, heated front seats, a power tailgate, keyless entry and push button start and a 12 inch digital instrument cluster. Our car has a few optional extras fitted, about $10,000 worth in fact, including the lifestyle pack which has the Harman Kardon stereo system, a panoramic sunroof and a few extras. As well as that, it's got the air suspension setup with the adaptive chassis control system. And yeah, it depends on what you want from your car. You might want to spend the extra money or you might not. Against its rivals, it seems to offer a pretty good mix of sportiness and luxury for the money. But tell us what you think. Hit us up in the comments section below. The changes to the exterior styling of the XC60 facelift model are quite subtle, but I don't think that's a bad thing. The previous version aged really nicely since it launched in 2017, and these minor changes around the body of the new version just add to that appeal, I think. I particularly love the headlights with the Thor's Hammer signature LED inlays. The whole shape of the front end is really nice, and in profile, it looks very sharp too. This model has air suspension too, and it can be set to lower automatically when you get in and out of the car as well. It looks very sleek and almost anti-SUV-like. At the rear, the changes are again quite subtle with a slight change to the rear bumper design. Being a brand new car, there's very little chance that you'll ever actually have to open the bonnet yourself. But if you do, make sure you don't do it in an underground car park because look how high that goes up. That's quite ridiculous and you actually have to go around to the side to be able to pull it down. There have been a few changes to the cabin, not much in terms of design, but there's still a similar looking dashboard, but new screens. Now, let me run you through some of the practicality elements of this family car. Classy and contemporary are the two words that come to mind when it's the cabin of the XC60 that we're talking about because it still looks as good as it did when the 2017 version launched. And that's not a bad thing because there haven't been major interior changes in terms of the design, but it's still a practical, comfortable place to be. I love this finish on the covered center cup holder section two cup holders there. You've also got a wireless phone charger. In front of that, there's a very small storage section, which is actually kind of useless, but at least it looks nice. Now, up here is the party piece for the interior. It's the new Google integrated media screen. So it's got complete Google usability. So you can say, hey Google, and it'll respond to whatever you want to ask it. That means that because there is a SIM card built in, you get four years of online access to the Google system, which is kind of cool. But the bad thing about this new updated screen is that you lose Apple CarPlay connectivity. 
So if you're an Apple devotee like me, you're gonna find it really frustrating because you have to use Bluetooth instead of just plugging in and having the phone mirroring on screen. Now there's a new screen in front of the driver as well. It's just a bit more info heavy than the previous one, a touch easier to interact with as well. I like that. All the other controls are very much the same as they've been throughout this generation of XC60. And in terms of other storage in the front, you've got bottle holders in the doors with big trenches as well. There's a covered center console bin here, which is full of my stuff that I've been using because it's a family car of this week. Now you might've noticed this seat is quite far forward. Now my partner is about five foot six, 165 centimeters tall, and she found it to be okay, but not comfortable. Uh, for me, I'm 182 centimeters or six foot. My knees were hard up against the glove box and I was not comfortable at all. Now that's because we've got a rearward facing child capsule in the back. If you don't have one of those, if you've got a simple forward facing seat or a booster, then it might be perfectly fine for bigger people to sit up front. Now, speaking of boosters, I actually got something to show you in the second row. In the back here, you've got an integrated booster seat. So you can actually pop up the base section of the seat and it works for kids that are between 15 and 36 kilos, at least 95 centimeters tall. So it's gonna be the right fit for some parents, but not for everyone, but it's a really smart piece of design and I really like it. So. I'm sitting behind my own driving position, 182 centimeters or six foot, as I said before, and I've got heaps of room back here, lots of knee room, plenty of foot room, a fair bit of headroom as well, even with this optional panoramic sunroof. I love the fact that there are controls down here for the fan speed, and you can also set the temperature down there as well. Vents there and vents in the pillars as well, which just makes it a much more comfortable backseat experience for kids. Now, speaking of kids, as you can see, I've got my rearward facing capsule in here and it takes up quite a bit of room. I know it's a big capsule by capsule standards, but it just means that front seat passenger is gonna be cramped, as I mentioned. As you can tell, it's got ISO fixed child seat anchor points in both outboard seats, three top tether points if you wanna put the seat in the middle instead, which you might wanna do. If you don't, you've got a flip down armrest, a pair of cup holders, which is good. It's nice and practical if you are gonna use it as a three or four seater. Now, it is a practical SUV if you've got slightly older children, I would say. For someone with a rearward facing capsule, it might be a little bit tight. The capacity and usability of the boot is probably one of the most important factors for you if you're choosing a new family SUV. This XC60, because it's got the air suspension, has a pretty neat party trick. You can lower the suspension down at the back to make loading in and out a fair bit easier. I actually like that. You just got to watch your head if you are on the tall side because you might bump it on that tailgate. Electric tailgate on this grade, which is good. You also can fit this size of suitcase and a pram, but not a whole lot more than that. So if you've got two young kids and a double pram and all the stuff that goes with it, this boot might not be big enough for you. It's 505 litres, which is on the lower side compared to some of its competitors and especially a little bit cramped for a mid-size SUV. For me, it's just a little bit too small for someone like me who's got a young child. It might be right for you, but tell us what you think in the comments section below. When it comes to parking the XC60, well, it's mostly pretty easy. It's an easy enough SUV to park, but the thing that annoys me most is that you have to press twice to go into reverse. And then once you're into your spot, you've also got to press twice to go back into drive, which just gets a little bit annoying over time. Although you do have the reverse camera, the surround view camera, and those front and side parking sensors. So it does make parking pretty easy. Being the B6R design, it's got the most powerful engine of the range, except for the plug-in hybrid. Uh, that's because the plug-in hybrid gets battery assistance to its power outputs and electric motors and stuff as well. But this car, because it's just a four-cylinder turbocharged two-liter engine with that little bit of extra poke that you do get from a standstill from the 48 volt mild hybrid system, it is, pretty damn quick, I've got to say. There's the 0 to 100 time is on your screen now, and that is 
almost what hot hatches were claiming five or six years ago, like the most potent hot hatches you could get. So it is quick for the money. There's no doubt about that. You might need that acceleration or not. The lower grades in the B5 engine spec or the lower spec version of the B6 do offer still plenty of grunt, more than you'll probably need. I mentioned a 48 volt mild hybrid system. Now what that is, is basically a battery pack that will collect what would have been lost energy through regenerative braking. So when you apply the brakes, when you're coming up to a speed hump like this, then you'll see a little symbol on the dashboard that shows that battery is being replenished and it will show that it's full when it's full. And that little battery will help you accelerate away from a standstill with a little bit more oomph than you would otherwise have if you were just driving a car that didn't have that 48 volt mild hybrid tech. The idea of it is that it should save you a little bit of fuel too, because you're using a battery rather than the engine to do that early push on from a standstill. It works pretty well, I have to say. It's almost imperceptible, and unlike a lot of the hybrid models that are out there, you don't notice that weirdness through the brake pedal feel. There is just a little bit of an unnatural element to the brake pedal feel, but it's not weird like some of the others out there. So you've got that punchy engine and eight speed automatic transmission. Now in cruise control situations, I've found that the transmission can be a little bit busy. And in fact, the cruise control can be quite annoying. If you're set on 80 Ks an hour going over the Blue Mountains, for example, as I did, uh, I noticed that it could fluctuate between five kilometers below and five kilometers over the set speed. So you have to watch that, especially if you're in a place where there might be people watching your speed speed. But having said that, the transmission around town is mostly quite agreeable. Now in terms of the comfort and the drivability of the XC60, because this car has the air suspension set up and also 21 inch wheels as standard, it is a bit of a odd match I would say. So the air suspension, so we'll hit a speed hump now and the air suspension does deal pretty well with bumps. It's not quite as I guess polished or refined as some of the rivals like a Volkswagen Touareg has the best air suspension of any car that I've ever driven and it just settles a bit quicker. This car you can still feel the 21 inch wheel bump through the cabin and it's not uncomfortable, but it's just something that you might want to keep in mind. You might buy a car that doesn't have the air suspension option and it might ride completely differently. I can't tell you about that because I haven't driven one of those variants. But what I can say is that you can adjust the air suspension to suit what you prefer. So there's a firm setting or a standard setting. I've found that the standard setting is actually a little bit jittery at times, where the firm setting just has a bit more of a planted road feel to it. So that's where I've had it set. There's also an adjustable element to the steering feel. So you can have it in normal or firm. Firm is just a little bit more sporty and direct and normal is just a touch lighter on center as well. Neither of the modes offer too much feel to the driver's hands. So if you are after a really, really sporty drive experience, especially for corner carving, well, maybe you shouldn't be looking at a family SUV. On your screen now, you'll see the official combined cycle fuel use figure for the B6 R design version of the XC60. It seems a little bit high for what is a mild hybrid version of this SUV, but in real world terms, here's what we've seen during a mix of driving. That's including highway, open road, bit of country stuff, and plenty of urban driving as well. There are plenty of high-tech driver safety systems fitted to every single XC60 you can buy, including autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, as well as lane keeping assist. And the good thing about this lane keeping assist system is you can switch it off using the screen. You go to driving and then you go to safety assistance and you turn off lane keeping aid. And if you don't like lane keeping assist like me, it'll actually stay switched off even when you get in and out of the car, lock it, unlock it, all that sort of stuff. And I love that because it just means you don't have to press a button every single time you drive the car. 
if you don't like lane keeping assist, like me. There's also blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert, and there's also rear autonomous emergency braking too, so it'll stop if it thinks you're gonna back into something or someone. There's also a parking sensor system around the car, front, side, and rear, 360 degree camera system as well, and that's standard on every grade too. And if you're wondering about the five star ANCAP safety rating, well, it got one in 2017, and it's still valid today, even though the goalposts have moved, there have been improvements over time to this car. The seven airbags, dual front, front driver's knee as well, front side and full length curtain coverage too. And if you're wondering where the XC60 is made, well, despite the fact it's still got a little Swedish flag on the dashboard, it's made in Chengdu in China. The entire Volvo range comes with a five year unlimited kilometer warranty, which is on par with the majority of the luxury players in the segment. There's also an eight year warranty for the battery pack in the mild hybrid version and the plug-in hybrid as well. And you also get five years of roadside assist in case something goes wrong when you're out on the road. Buyers can also choose to add a service plan to their purchase. It makes sense to roll that cost into your purchase or finance payments, and there's a three-year schedule that covers 45,000 Ks. You'll see the price on the screen, or five years of cover that spans out to 75,000 clicks, both of which are competitively priced for the luxury car segment. Service intervals are every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers. Is the updated XC60 a good family SUV? Well, the answer is yes. It offers plenty of safety, heaps of technology, and plenty of comfort as well. If you've got young kids like I do, a seven month old, and they're still in a rearward facing capsule, just make sure when you go for a test drive, take your seat with you and check out whether you've got enough space for the front seat passenger because it is a little squeezy. Otherwise, it's a very impressive mid-size luxury SUV. Tell us what you think. Would you choose this or one of its German rivals or maybe a Japanese rival? Let us know and we'd love to hear from you. If you've got anything you want to tell us about your experience with an XC60, hit us up in the comments section below. Coming up, you're going to see my Family Guide review score and if you want to find out how I came to that, that score you can read my full detailed review the link is in the description below if you're watching on YouTube and if you are watching on YouTube don't forget to hit like hit subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can keep up to date with all of our videos thanks for watching